Oh, I have to see that one, Captain. I haven't watched it yet. You hear about the widow in Utah who wrote a book grieving her husband's death who was just charged with his murder. Yeah, we talked about that a while ago. That's pretty old, right? You're talking about that lady who used to write the um, murder mystery stories and one of them was about like uh, killing, how to kill your husband and get away with it, I think the title was. It turns out she did kill her husband. The book can't be reliable because she got caught. We talked about it on stream, but I guess I'll briefly bring it up since now we've mentioned it. There's an elderly woman. And she wrote a book called... What was the name of it? Oh, wait, this is a totally different story. How often does this happen? Woman who wrote book on grief following husband's death accused of his murder. This is not... This is not the one I was talking about at all. How common is this? The story I was talking about is this one. Called How to Murder Your Husband. And unsurprisingly, she murdered her husband. Crazy. I, I know, that, that's... Who could have seen that coming? Yeah, they kind of got her dead to rights, too. They kind of pinned her whole location down on the day of her husband's death. It was... It was fucked. If I remember correctly, her husband was like a culinary teacher and she drove to the university he was teaching at and just shot him dead. And then drove away. If I remember correctly, I think she's also the same woman that tried to promote her book afterwards as well. But I might be getting her confused for somebody else. But yeah, no, that, that's the one I was talking about. I don't know anything about this. Utah woman who published a children's book on processing grief following the death of her husband last year has now been accused of poisoning him with a lethal dose of fentanyl. Holy shit. Did it take them this long to run, like, an autopsy? Like, a toxicology report? I feel like this would have immediately been a red flag, like, huh. Died unexpectedly. An alarming amount of fentanyl. Hmm. It's not exactly someone something that something something that someone just ingests naturally. While appearing on Good Things Utah to promote her children's book, Corey said her husband died unexpectedly and alleged that Eric was poisoned by a lethal dose of fentanyl on the night of March third, twenty twenty two. They were celebrating her closing on house for business that night, and she made a she made Eric a Moscow mule in the kitchen and brought it to their bedroom, where Eric consumed it while sitting in bed. She alleged she went to sleep with one of their children who was having a night terror and returned to her and her husband's bedroom at 3 a.m., where she found him cold to the touch, supposedly attempting to perform CPR, but when first responders arrived, they advised that it had not appeared that she had done any CPR due to the large amount of blood that came from Eric's mouth. Jesus, this is so fucking morbid. Why? Why did she... Why? Why would she do this? Autopsy determined he died from a fentanyl overdose and that the level of fentanyl in his system was five times the lethal dosage according to the charging documents. It was illicit fentanyl, not medical grade, and that it was likely ingested orally. How, how did she not get caught sooner? Allegedly texted them asking for prescription pain medication for an investor who had a back injury. Left some hydro, okay. Ask for some of the Michael Jackson stuff. Ask specifically for fentanyl. It's been a long time since the Michael Jackson stuff. Was it fentanyl that, that got him? I don't think it was, was it? I thought it was like some other concoction. This is the resub salty jar Joe Blue and the tier one Eakin. Didn't OJ Simpson write a book like this? OJ wrote a book called If I Did It. Here's how or something. But yeah, he did. Thanks to the Bits Mills. He had the propofol. Mm, okay. 
Three days later, following a Valentine's Day dinner, Eric became very ill and believed he had been poisoned. Eric told a friend that he thought his wife was trying to poison him. Holy shit, that's terrifying. According to the search warrant, Eric took one bite of a sandwich his wife bought him that Valentine's Day, broke into hives, and couldn't breathe. He reportedly used an EpiPen and took Benadryl and passed out. When he woke up, woke up he immediately called his business partner about the incident. Jesus. They advised he warned them that if anything happened to him, she was to blame. What the fuck? Why would this man stay here? Jesus. He even gave them like a... What's it, what, what are those called in movies? Like, if you're watching this, I'm already dead, and here's who it was. Like, one of those, like, uh, tapes? Oh, my. Prior to his death, Eric removed his wife from his will and life insurance and was looking into a divorce and wanted his kids taken care of. Couple also allegedly arguing over a nearly $2 million property she wanted to flip. The day after Eric's death, his wife allegedly signed the closing papers on the home. This is so... ridiculous. January 2022, Corey allegedly updated her husband's life insurance policy with his business partner to make herself the sole beneficiary. The insurance company notified her husband and his business partner and they changed it back to being each other's beneficiary. What a downright evil, evil woman. How long did it take for her to get arrested? I, I mean, judging by this article, it looks like a, almost a year, right? Which is, which is wild that it took so long. Thanks to five good subs, Fox. Appreciate that. And thanks to tier one Elkin and the resub Diabolical Cyrus. Kyber Felipe jumping in the prime immortal. The bits arrow. A kind of manipulative psycho writes a book about grieving after murdering someone. Just a, just an evil, irredeemable person. I don't know, man. There's just real evil in the world. That's... That's just the sad reality of it.